Hello. A friend of mine was asking questions about how to record vocals using a laptop microphone or a really cheap crappy microphone. And I thought I would just walk you through uh, the best way to do it and some processing you can do after the fact to make your audio sound a little bit better. It's, it's never going to sound great, most likely. But you can at least get it to rough draft quality, get your ideas down. So the worst case scenario is you are recording your music using your laptop and the music is coming out of the laptop and you're recording your vocals into the laptop without headphones. Okay, so I've recorded some audio, but first let's have a quick listen at the music we're talking about so you understand what I'm saying. That's my cat. Just ignore him. Voice. Okay, so that's the music that we're using. And so I recorded some vocals without headphones. This is what they sound like. Worthless. Okay, when you can hear the music coming through the microphone, that's called bleed. And typically, there's a little bit of uh, bleed coming from headphones, but I mean, this is, this is virtually unusable. And I'm going to explain why, and you'll understand a little bit better by the end of the video. Um, in order to use this audio file, we would first have to go through and cut away all the background music, okay? So that we're, when we process the audio, the vocals, you're only processing that audio. Worthless. So we have to go through. To go through and cut all of this away, but you can still hear the music very, very, uh, very clearly behind the vocals. Worthless. So whenever you apply uh, EQ or compression or anything to that audio, it's also going to apply to the music that's in the background and it's going to sound very strange. Uh, let's see if we can hear this. Worthless. So uh, you may not have been able to hear it very clearly in the video, but uh, the bass uh, was very, very strong when the vocals were on, and then it went away when we cut the vocals off. Okay, so my advice would be without hesitation, just don't do it this way. This is absolutely the worst way you can record vocals on top of music. Okay, um, what you need are headphones, earbuds, anything that can isolate the music that you're listening to from the vocals that you are recording. Okay, even the, the cheapest, uh, you know, one dollar set of earbuds off eBay is going to be better than running into your laptop while the music is coming out of your laptop. Okay, so compare, let's uh, compare what you've just heard and what you can see here to this. Okay. So this one, as you can see, this one I just used a pair of headphones. Let's have a listen and see if you can tell the difference. Worthless. Oh, my mistake. I have all the processing on. We'll get to that in a little bit. Worthless. Circuits. So, as you could hear and very clearly see between these two files, the only thing that we're picking up is the vocals and then a bit of background noise and uh, air, mostly from the fan blowing out of the laptop. Okay? So, the first thing we're going to do is you can, if you want, go through and cut, cut away all these bits where there's just background noise. Okay? And 
in any professional setting, that's what you're going to do. But if you're recording your vocals into a microphone that's on your laptop, it's probably not meant for professional consumption, right? So we can use a noise gate. Now Reaper comes with a noise gate called Regate. And Regate has a lot of settings, but essentially what we need is to set the noise threshold level. That means that anytime there's noise playing here, uh, the noise gate will mean the track is silent and you will only hear sound when the audio breaks the threshold. So have a look at the threshold here. Make sure we go back here. All right. So have a look at the threshold. You will only hear audio whenever it breaks this minus 21 decibel mark. Worthless. When it drops below that, the track becomes silent, which is exactly what you want. Um, by default, the hold and the release are quite noisy. Uh, because we have, for example, if we listen here, Less. Oh, I didn't set the threshold. So if we set the threshold back at 21, you will hear the noise gate come in while I'm still singing, and it will start clipping my voice away. Less. It's like, eh, 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 eh. okay, so we don't want that. And the way to prevent that is by using the hold and release functions. So if we move this up just a little bit, let's have a listen. Less. No, nope, that's still the release of the noise gate is still too short. It's chopping my the ends of my words off. I found that around 500, 600 uh, is good. Less. Yeah. Uh, and the noise gate is going to depend on the audio level, that's the threshold, and the style of singing that you're doing, and the, the voice that you're using, how dynamic the voice is. Okay? So... We put the regate on there, and now if we have a look, I just want to show you before we do anything else. If you look here, the noise gate has cut away all the little bits of noise and everything, and you're only getting the vocals, which is ideally probably what you want. Okay? All right. Now, we have the noise gate on. Next, we're probably going to put a little bit of EQ. Now the trick with EQ is you want to eliminate the frequencies that you, you're not going to use. And the way that I do EQ, let's go ahead and set that, is, especially in the beginning, we're just going to use re-EQ. It's the one that comes bundled with Reaper. So in the beginning, you have a listen to the, the track. Worthless. And then you start moving the frequencies from the low end and the frequencies from the high end until you hear the music being affected in a negative way. Okay, And what I mean by that is you can cut quite a lot of low end and high end out of a signal before you start hearing it impact the sound in a way that is not musical. And when we hear that, we just go back a little bit until you're only cutting away those frequencies you don't need. So for example, from the low end, Worthless Circuits You can see, Worthless You can cut quite a bit. Circuits Worthless <laughs> You know what? I just realized I don't even have the EQ on. Let's try that again, shall we? Worthless Circuits Worthless So right around 200 hertz, I start hearing the voice become a little bit thin. So I'm going to back it off a little bit. Worthless And I find for this for this song and these vocals, 180 is a pretty good place to cut away. Now let's go to the high end. Worthless Circuits Worthless 
and I find about 7,000 hertz is where it starts to impact it. Now we've cut away a lot of this worthless, useless low end and a lot of this uh, brittle, harsh high end that comes from such a cheap microphone. Okay, next we're gonna slap some compressor on there. Now what the compressor does in a nutshell is it makes the louder parts softer and the softer parts louder. It evens out the dynamics of the vocals. And we're just gonna use a stock setting, modern vocal. There's lots of, uh, lots of parameters that you can mess around with and that's beyond the scope of this video so I just stick with the stock settings. Uh, there is one option though that it's up to you to decide whether you want to use it or not and that's this, the auto makeup. Okay, The auto makeup, I'm going to show you the difference that it makes. So here's the, the audio file. We're going to render it. And you can see that it's, it's a lot quieter than the original file. Then if we render it with the auto makeup on, it's going to bring the level up to the highest uh, peak. And because I normalized these files before we started listening to them, it's going to normal, it's going to peak them at zero decibels. So they're gonna be nice. And now you can see the difference between these two files. It has here, you can see it has evened out the vocals a little bit. They're less peaky. There's less dynamics, which depending on your vocal style and the music that you're working on, you may, may or may not want. But this is a good place to start. All right, and then last but not least, because these vocals still don't sound great, we're gonna add a little bit of delay to thicken them up. If you use a uh, re-delay, there is the appropriately titled voice fattener. And then we add a little bit of reverb or reverbate. The uh, other reverb is actually impulse uh, reverb and that's not what we want. Uh, reverb is a more standard DSP and we'll go with uh, intimate vocal what the hell and then we have a listen Worthless. okay so in that the reverb is actually quite high so I would probably back that off we'll go to 50 see how that sounds Worthless circuits. All right, now it sounds like you're singing in a pretty, pretty big room and sounds nice. Let's see how it sounds with the music. Worthless circuits. All right, that doesn't sound bad. Uh, of course, you can do more processing to make it sound a little bit better, but I think with such a cheap microphone or just using the laptop microphone, it's kind of not worth it for a rough draft to do that much work. Um, before I let you go, let's have a real quick look at the process. So Regate cuts away uh, all the hiss and hum and noise that's in the background. Uh, Re-EQ gets rid of those unwanted frequencies that you're not going to need. The compressor will even out the dynamics of the vocals. Delay just makes the voice a little bit fatter, a little bit thicker. And reverbate sets the voice in on a virtual sound stage that gives it a bit of presence and air so it doesn't sound quite so cheap. If you have any questions or comments or criticism or hate mail, uh, drop me a line on YouTube or Tumblr or Facebook. Uh, Hope you learned something.